And I'm really pleased to be able to provide an update on advanced nursing practice in Canada. I'm Josette Roussel, and I'm the program lead in um, practice, nursing practice and, and policy at the Canadian Nurses Association. And I will be presenting um, the webinar today, as well as uh, um, answering any questions that you may have at the end of the presentation. The uh, webinar setup is that um, you have a Q&A box on the right hand of your screen and uh, you can type in your questions. If you have any throughout the webinar, uh, we will try to answer those as, um, as we proceed with the presentation. And without further ado, I will uh, start the presentation. The uh, Framework is a very important tool for nurses in, in many, many um, areas, and uh, as well as decision makers, educators, employers, policy makers, and researchers. CNA has had um, many requests uh, for copies of this framework when it was uh, uh, published in 2008. And um, 10 years later, uh, CNA um, uh, had decided to uh, revise the framework as um, we had many changes to uh, advance practice nursing and we work closely with um, an advisory team uh, and the advisory team is highlighted in the revised framework. We had members from uh, across the jurisdictions representing uh, research um, roles, uh, educators role, we had practitioners uh, from the clinical nurse specialist group and the nurse practitioner group, as well as representative from um, association and regulatory uh, bodies and employers. And uh, we're really grateful for their dedication, expertise, and contribution uh, to advance this work and to also uh, develop uh, the, the revised version. It took a lot of effort and uh, as well as uh, we consulted with members in um, a survey using a survey and we're really pleased to have uh, feedback from members on this work. The uh, framework has um, uh, new sections and I will highlight these in the presentation. First, uh, I will provide an overview of what advanced practice nursing is and uh, provide the uh, new revised uh, framework uh, sections or elements. And also, uh, we are uh, asked a lot about what's happening uh, with ICN and with the, the role internationally. So I will uh, provide a bit of an update, an exciting update and news for Canada related to some global developments. The evolution of uh, advanced uh, practice nursing um, has been um, since 2000 a very, very steady. I'm highlighting just a few um, activities that are listed in the framework. And the CNA board has uh, approved the first publication of a, it was called an advanced nursing practice, a national framework in 2000. And through, uh, throughout the years, there's been many, many activities nationally on advanced practice nursing. We were fortunate to have a 10-year chair program under the leadership of uh, Dr. Alda DeSandro that finished in 2011, and then culminated in uh, another research network, uh, uh, the Canadian um, Advanced Practice Nursing Research Framework um, Network, who uh, is now led by uh, Dr. Brian Lakosius and Dr. Meisner. And in 2002, we had a revision of the framework that highlighted um, some um, uh, educational uh, requirements as minimum preparation, graduate degree nursing. And in 2004, we had uh, CNA was awarded the funding by federal government to enable the development of uh, the nurse practitioner role throughout a number of frameworks and activities. And that led to uh, other development uh, following uh, years. And uh, in 2008, 
we published the second edition of, of the framework. And that year we had uh, the international uh, conference highlighting advanced nursing practice globally in Toronto. And uh, in uh, 2009, and then we revised them in 2016, we had position statements on both the CNS and the nurse practitioner role. And um, another activity that was um, followed is uh, the launch of uh, pan-Canadian core competencies for the clinical nurse specialist. Not highlighted there, there, but highlighted in the framework is that we also had competencies for this, the nurse practitioners, and those were revised by the jurisdictional regulatory body. And uh, now we're into 2019, where we have uh, an, another version of the, the framework. We've had numerous reports in, uh, in Canada calling for strong leadership, nursing leadership and transforming our healthcare system. And we know that nurses working in those roles do fulfill this need. And uh, these nurses meet the need of uh, Canadians who have complex needs in a wide variety, a variety of settings and models. And that's what the newest uh, version has highlighted. Uh, So this is the uh, a version of the framework on your right hand side. The uh, cover has changed. And as I said earlier, we're changing the uh, title to align with uh, research. Uh, it's called now Advanced Practice Nursing. And uh, we are uh, bringing up a common understanding of roles in Canada, uh, bringing up definitions uh, with some revisions and elements uh, reflecting on the education roles, regulators, regulations, apologize. And we have um, a section on scope of practice and title protection. We also added uh, more information around uh, implementation, integration and sustainability, and evaluation. We thought that uh, uh, impact and outcomes uh, were very important to highlight earlier in the framework. So we had that section really earlier on in the framework. And it is important that um, decision makers align the roles with patients or population health needs. And that's what the research of Dr. Brian Koshis and Dr. Martin Meisner uh, bring. And um, it's been highlighted by those Canadian researchers of the need of aligning these roles with patients or population health needs. There is a paucity of, of true economic evaluation and limited evidence. Although there are needs for that, we have indicated in the framework that there are numerous uh, systematic reviews of studies examining uh, how health services uh, use uh, advanced uh, practice nurses and uh, these uh, can result in reduced costs. So this is highlighted in the uh, newest version. So the definition has slightly changed to advanced practice nursing. It remains an umbrella term uh, for registered nurse and nurse practitioners who integrate uh, graduate nursing educational preparation with in-depth specialized clinical nursing knowledge and expertise in complex decision making to meet the needs of individuals, families, group, communities, and populations. So there's a, some slight changes in the revised definition, and it encompasses the, uh, the two roles that we have in Canada. And we have advanced practitioners who are uh, called CNSs and nurse practitioners, and those, in the, those nurses in those roles are able to critically analyze and synthesize knowledge. And these are other activities that they do, the integrate and apply theory, participate in and lead research depending on their role that they have, use their advanced clinical competencies, and we have more description around those competencies in the document. And these roles uh, develop and, and bring nursing knowledge and develop the profession as, their, as a whole. 
The nurse practitioner uh, want to highlight that they have additional regulatory authority to autonomously diagnose, prescribe, and in order to protect, test for their clients. In one jurisdiction, the diagnostic uh, um, aspect is uh, limited to a group of um, illness in Quebec, a group of uh, specific uh, list of uh, conditions. And, uh, but in other jurisdictions, uh, nurse practitioners are able to diagnose. These are some of the characteristics that we've highlighted. And we uh, were uh, highlighting the high degree of autonomy of these roles. And uh, these are some uh, comments that we received uh, from consultation. And these roles are either in professional teams or intersectorial teams, depending on the models where they work in. Uh, extensive depth and breadth of knowledge, again, to meet the needs of the patients they, they serve. And uh, improving accessibility, that's a large component of these roles, safety and quality of healthcare. These roles uh, initiate or lead or participate in planning some programs, and um, they are able to apply uh, theoretical, uh, ethical, or foundations of related to nursing practice, and they do have advanced uh, expertise and assessment, judgment, and decision-making skills. Other characteristics uh, that we highlighted and we have uh, described uh, a bit more in the framework is the uh, in-depth knowledge, research and clinical expertise, and the use of knowledge mobilization techniques. That's a new concept that we uh, see that uh, these roles are um, implementing and promoting. Provision of consultation services uh, to other team members and stakeholders. And the knowledge of application of improvement science to lead the quality improvement initiative. Next. Another uh, list of characteristics that uh, you will find in the framework is that uh, these roles have what we call influential leadership and they change, they change, change management skills that they implement to really improve uh, systems level uh, outcomes and uh, the influence of health policy or, or changing health policies and uh, provision of uh, leadership to address or bring up some ethical problems. Where I see those examples uh, from a national perspective is that uh, both these roles can bring up and work with uh, both national association and organization to influence changes that would optimize their role. So for example, um, in um, uh, CNA's previous work a year and a half ago, we had uh, worked closely with the uh, Nurse Practitioner Association of Canada and individual nurse practitioners to identify some barriers that were federal in nature and those uh, uh, were certainly, um, we worked out on how to analyze and how to bring the issue and influence decision makers. And we work closely with uh, nurse practitioners to make those changes. So this is how uh, these roles are essential and influence uh, to their leadership and activities, these uh, policies. Going back to the evolution and the history of these roles, we had uh, highlighted in the, uh, in the framework, certainly the contribution of uh, nursing that led the way in the 21st century, recognizing that uh, we have nurses that uh, have been uh, really uh, uh, leading the, the way into implementing these roles and led the way to more formalized uh, advanced practice roles in the 60s. And then education programs changed, credentialing has changed, and uh, we recognize these uh, nurses. Are, some of them are still in, in roles uh, uh, before it was uh, formalized and with new education program. We have uh, two roles in, in, in Canada. We have CNSs 
in various uh, specialty areas. And uh, we have nurse practitioners, again, in uh, various uh, settings and, and roles. Nurse practitioners uh, are uh, either community-based or sometimes in uh, settings um, in long-term care. We see them in specialty areas in uh, some acute care settings. And uh, newer models have been uh, developing um, in, in light of uh, needs of populations where nurse practitioners have uh, led uh, more um, uh, 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 led clinics and uh, more officially led some uh, teams. And uh, in CNSs, we've seen uh, new roles in um, specialty areas that have led to um, more positions in uh, areas such as uh, uh, palliative care, um, oncology nursing, also um, uh, cardiovascular um, and uh, geriatrics, where we see these roles have um, evolved into uh, uh, being uh, very essential uh, members of the team and bringing uh, solutions to uh, uh, really um, uh, access to care or even uh, providing resources to expertise to the team. Next. So these are the two roles. And uh, as I said earlier, the nurse practitioner role has uh, and remains uh, has a legislative authority and additional uh, uh, legislative authority to uh, diagnose. There's some uh, nuances and uh, differences in one jurisdiction in Quebec, and uh, they can order and interpret tests, uh, prescribe treatments, including medication, and uh, specific procedures. We are saying specific within the legislative scope of practice. There are differences in some jurisdictions keeping it uh, a bit flexible uh, to enable some flexibility for, uh, as per the jurisdictions. The CNSs have expert specialty knowledge. Uh, they have abilities to provide consultation autonomously in highly complex uh, clients, and uh, but also uh, primary care providers, and they impact uh, the diagnostic, and prescribe treatments, and they also may assist or assist within their legislative scope of practice. Depending on the environment where they work, there may be some uh, uh, specific provision uh, that are provided by the employers. And um, in Canada, the CNS does not have uh, title protection, and um, they work in, uh, as I said earlier, in various settings. Uh, depending on the, the jurisdiction. This is a list of uh, the competencies that we have described in the, uh, in the framework. We have the uh, direct comprehensive care competencies that have been there before, and we provided a bit more explanation into uh, some of the activities that uh, uh, advanced practice nursing uh, brain in a specialty, specialized area of nursing. So we have uh, uh, more description on uh, what it means for the advanced assessment and intervention that they have with clients, communities, or population, and the use of multiple sources of data when they do their assessment influencing uh, complex situations and making clinical decision and initiating or managing change, and uh, also uh, analyzing the interaction of complex uh, processes, determinants of health, and uh, client's experience. They also anticipate and explain a wide range of uh, um, Clients' responses, and this is one area that uh, uh, we see uh, where they have uh, great influence, and they recommend actions. They guide decision making in complex clinical situations. They also identify and assess trends and patterns 
that have health implications for clients. They disseminate knowledge, use appropriate delivery me methods, and they recognize the need for and plan the measurements of what they're implementing, and they manage a wide range of uh, response. And of course, they minimize variance in care and prevent adverse outcomes. So that's all in the direct comprehensive care competency section. The optimizing the health system is uh, revised and has been uh, uh, newly added to reflect the uh, uh, contribution of advanced uh, practice nurses to health systems through their advocacy roles, uh, promotion of uh, innovative client care and facilitating client-centered care. So we have uh, uh, engagement strategies. We also have the generation of uh, new knowledge through either practice guidelines, care protocols, programs, and policies, some advocacy uh, competencies, understanding the resource allocation and cost effectiveness of health system decision making. This is where some of their roles and competencies uh, are sought of. And they also have a role in system level change through policy and guidelines and the effective use of resources. Advanced practitioners participate in strategic planning, Department of Facility strategic planning. They also contribute or collaborate with recruitment and retention activities where they work, implement improvement in healthcare. They also uh, contribute uh, to processes and they understand legislative and social uh, political issues that may influence uh, health and identify gaps in healthcare, develop strategies and manage change that comes back again and advocate for change in health policies by participating on regional, provincial, territorial, and federal committees that influence decision making. And we do uh, bring advanced practice nurses. Some of the committee work that we uh, have uh, done in the past, um, and we continue to include them in, in, those, uh, in those committee work. Educational competencies are new and were uh, suggested by advisory committee members and others, and we uh, feel these represent what uh, advanced practitioners are committed in doing, and they're committed to professional growth and learning, as well as supporting um, healthcare providers, students, and families or clients related to their health and wellness. So we have a series of competencies where they have uh, influence and they, uh, they do uh, provide support as mentors, preceptors, and coaches. They create opportunities uh, for learning. They uh, do contribute to knowledge, skills, and development of the team members. And they also support professional growth, uh, continuous learning, and cooperative practice. Building capacity within their uh, unit, and they do have uh, uh, collaborative projects with uh, academia and maintaining cross appointments. Uh, that's usually um, the case for advanced practice nurses. The research competencies have been there before and we've highlighted uh, uh, new elements uh, and more uh, succinct in uh, their uh, commitment to generate, synthesize, and critique or applying research evidence to their practice. So we have a series of elements in those uh, research competencies. The reader identifying, conducting, or supporting research. They can uh, evaluate current practice and suggest some research questions, collect data, or maybe involve formally in uh, scoping or reviews. And they can inform or facilitate the uh, uh, evidence inform uh, evidence in, in the practice where they're working. Other competencies are around leadership and we have uh, different, uh, uh, we have revised them to uh, reflect the uh, changes in the roles and we have added uh, some related to uh, a vision for nursing practice, influence and uh, contribution to 
health systems vision and implementation of that vision, addressing problems uh, that may occur where they're working, and uh, promoting nursing and advanced practice role through involvement in uh, professional association and special interest group. This is really a, a quick summary of the competencies. Consultation and collaboration. Uh, competencies were there in 28 through 08, and uh, we have uh, added uh, some new uh, competencies to reflect the Canadian Interprofessional Health Collaborative uh, Competency Framework. So we have um, the competencies of uh, timely and providing appropriate consultation, referral and collaboration with uh, other providers and providing recommendations and uh, work to gather evidence uh, and build uh, effective coalition and partnership. We also added some um, the use of the theories to uh, group dynamics, role in organization and coordination of interprofessional, interprofessional, and inter intersectorial teams, depending on where they're working. And uh, bringing in those uh, competencies, uh, the unique competencies that uh, both roles have, we know that nurse practitioners have uh, unique competencies that uh, uh, CNS have, as well unique competencies that are reflected in their uh, competencies uh, framework and uh, the advanced practice nursing competencies build on uh, the competencies that they have from their own roles. Of course in uh, any uh, advanced for any advanced practice nurse uh, as part of their uh, ongoing learning uh, continuing competence is very important and uh, as well as uh, depending on the role they play and it is important to have uh, liability protection and it's um, just a, a reflection in the framework for uh, the nurse practitioner uh, role having uh, sufficient uh, uh, protection and the importance of all advanced practice nurses to have adequate uh, professional protection or insurance uh, to uh, cover what they're doing and their practice and the level of risk. We also added a new section and this was uh, something that was um, uh, brought up many, many times. And uh, we put an emphasis on uh, uh, evidence that uh, is, uh, is newer evidence from uh, synthesis and uh, as I said earlier there is um, although there is some limitation in economic evaluation we do value the uh, uh, systematic reviews that bring some outcomes that are, that are uh, showcasing the effectiveness of the roles. What we've highlighted in the NV framework is um, some uh, evidence it's not reflecting all the evidence, but we uh, took, um, um, we did a summary of the most um, uh, relevant evidence that would highlight uh, better care, uh, better value, better health based on the AAA framework. And these are included in, at the end of the, of the framework. As well as we were asked to provide uh, examples of uh, how, uh, what are some of the factors that influence implementation of these roles? And we've added uh, some factors that should be considered when we have, uh, we're thinking about uh, implementing the, uh, the roles. And uh, the first level factors are within uh, responsibility of federal, provincial, and territorial governments. So some, uh, some elements that are brought up to what what should be uh, considered, and uh, these are there. The second factors are maybe uh, more relevant to practitioners. They focus on uh, practice setting. So for example, we have, uh, and these are all based on uh, literature, uh, leadership and support of uh, uh, leaders in the organization, the nurse executive is key for implementation of uh, these roles. Uh, 
supervision of a, other advanced practice roles or a senior level nurse administrator who understands the role uh, is very important in, in areas where uh, we're able to do that. Leadership uh, by advanced practice nurses, by identifying opportunities where we can introduce these roles. Also some um, role clarity during role development or implementation. Funding mechanism is very important. That's the second level factors that are described in the framework. Appropriate level of remuneration harmonized across the country. Ongoing support, orientation programs, mentorship, and peer support. We also have uh, support that are needed in different aspects of implementation. Uh, implementation and evaluation of the role, and we've provided some examples. And also uh, some policies that encourage nurses to pursue programs in those. Uh, and of course, professional development and lifelong learning. We also highlighted the uh, importance of dedicated time for advanced practice nurses to have uh, the ability to fulfill all the competencies uh, that we've highlighted earlier, the direct comprehensive care education, optimizing health system, research, leadership, consultation, and collaboration. The uh, interprofessional education and organizations that fosters teamwork is very important. Resources to uh, put in place to, to ensure that uh, the infrastructure is supportive and uh, policy process that uh, promote the nurses in their role. We also highlighted some um, resources that uh, exist uh, from uh, the nursing regulatory bodies, the Provincial Nursing Association, Canadian Nurses Association has resources. We also have, have some advanced practice association representing nurse practitioners and clinical nurse specialists. We have national groups uh, and also provincial groups. The schools of nursing and the Canadian Association of Schools of Nursing are an uh, organization that uh, may have resources. The uh, Professional Territorial Nursing Unions and the Canadian Federation of Nursing Unions are also a key. Canadian Federation of Nurses Union has uh, published uh, uh, results of a survey done uh, last uh, year, which has a number of uh, uh, recommendations that we've highlighted throughout their framework. We also uh, bring up the networking and mentorship opportunities through the various nursing specialty groups of uh, CNA's Canadian Network of Nursing Specialties. There are many, many groups that uh, have the advanced practice nurses part of those groups. Uh, and uh, there's also a number of uh, clinical practice guidelines, best practice. I mentioned earlier the Canadian Centre for Advanced Practice Nursing Research is a national group and they have uh, have a number of research uh, researchers that are uh, working in these roles and to provide evidence um, to advance the role. We also have uh, national data from the uh, Canadian Institute for Health Information, uh, not optimal for some of the roles of clinical nurse specialists, uh, not easy to uh, document the numbers, but for nurse practitioners, it's been improvement, and we're able to track down the number of nurse practitioners in uh, various uh, settings. So now the next slide describes some of the tools that we have described. Uh, PEPA Plus is uh, a tool that Dr. Uh, Brian Nikosius has uh, implemented after PEPA. And in this uh, uh, diagram, you see some of the activities included in the uh, evaluation component of uh, of uh, advanced practice uh, nursing roles, and we have the reference uh, in the framework if you're, if you're looking for more information. The Canadian Nurse Practitioner Initiative also has an implementation and evaluation toolkit that's available, and that's based on uh, the PEPA framework. Now a bit more about the uh, literature, so just two examples of where we have uh, highlighted uh, uh, systematic reviews of the bed of care, where um, 
higher uh, satisfaction reduction in hospital admission and reduction in mortality when advanced practice nurses are leading care and in comparison with uh, physicians. Uh, next, we have under better health uh, highlighted some uh, examples uh, with CNSs or uh, nurse practitioner led models, uh, specifically in cancer care that have uh, provided great, uh, uh, great outcomes and um, it's highlighted uh, in the framework. Where are the opportunities similar to the other framework? We've highlighted some shifts and some opportunities uh, and uh, we see that um, there is a role for uh, uh, nursing and advanced practice uh, roles in, in community-based care and primary care. There are also some new models where teams can uh, use uh, CNSs or nurse practitioners to uh, enhance outcomes related to palliative care, mental health, uh, some uh, in gerontology uh, management of uh, dementia. There's also some models where uh, uh, virtual care is provided by uh, nurses in those roles where follow-up can be done in a timely manner uh, with uh, nurses with those skills and it's uh, providing specialty knowledge in areas where uh, a lack of access is, has been highlighted. So virtual care is an area that we see um, is uh, getting momentum. And we have highlighted other examples of where we see there might be opportunities uh, for these roles. Now, um, I know I don't have much time left. I want to answer a few questions that I'm getting through the uh, uh, Q&A box, but just want to highlight some um, global developments. And uh, the ICN Nurse Practitioner Advanced Practice Nursing Network is an international resources. And uh, uh, this uh, network highlights uh, uh, both uh, policy, uh, education, regulations and uh, also a new development uh, globally and uh, this network undertakes different projects to advance the role and it's a forum for exchanging and we have um, I'm part of this network we also have other Canadians that are part of this network and a subgroup that uh, are, are uh, comprised of the network so next I'm just going to go through uh, uh, a bit of information about the network. We have members in 90 countries. And the definition is, on, is a, quite a, an umbrella term, similar to Canadian definition, but it's under review right now. It's, uh, it was done in early 2000, and the network is working with ICN to review the, uh, the definition, which will represent uh, globally advanced uh, practice nurses and um, will be uh, made flexible so that uh, same as in 2002 so that they uh, can be shaped by the country which uh, in which the uh, the role is enabled and uh, next the definition is uh, highlighted that as an umbrella term and um, the uh, APN roles are currently being developed in over 70 countries and we hear more and more countries uh, wanting to develop these roles. Uh, some of the issues are uh, in the other slides. I'm just going to move quickly. Core components, uh, autonomous practice is a core component of the, uh, these roles uh, globally, critical thinking, an advanced level of decision making and problem solving, and you will find this in the Canadian uh, context as well. Value based care, leadership components. And then, what's happening globally is uh, there is a need for uh, better planning and better uh, meeting the needs of. Uh, of the population and uh, advancing nursing roles. So there is a demand for health services that is not uh, uh, covered and, and needs to be accessed right now. So this is 
uh, based on the research of uh, Madrid Schroeder. And uh, what, what's happening globally is, just going to wait a few seconds. The um, education varied and um, it it's, goes from a diploma to a certificate and a de baccalaureate degree is still uh, a goal for many countries, but it's a huge uh, uh, issue with some shortages and uh, there's, um, it's still growing, the master's degrees, but uh, the PhD is, is still in its uh, infancy, and that's been a recent uh, uh, paper and research done by uh, Schober and Pulcini. The main element that's uh, brought up by uh, global, uh, the global uh, uh, context is that the uh, prescribing component is essential and uh, it's um, in some countries it's not uh, uh, aligned only with advanced practice role in the UK for example we have other roles with the nurses that are prescribers and uh, uh, it's uh, it's developing and uh, legislation is very important and uh, it's um, it's challenging um, to, to bring those changes in, in some countries where they have uh, uh, very little resources. Next. Terminology continues to be a challenge globally. So same issues, uh, consensus around titles, roles, and characteristics. And uh, when we did a research, uh, the network did a research uh, eight years ago, nine years ago, there were many, many titles used, and uh, we're uh, repeating this research, and uh, we haven't had the findings yet, but it will be presented at the International Congress in Singapore, where we're at with uh, terminology and roles. Now, uh, next, the exciting uh, news is that a few delays in my slide. Next, with that. The exciting news is that in 2020, we're going to host the uh, 11th ICN Nurse Practitioner Advanced Practice Nurse Nursing Conference, uh, Network Conference in Halifax. So, I want you all to consider submitting, uh, those of you, uh, an abstract or um, proposal for a workshop. It's going to be held in August, uh, end of August to September. Second, it's four days and 2020, so put that in your calendar. The call for abstract will uh, uh, be coming uh, probably, I would say, in early fall, or sort of this summer. We're just finalizing uh, the scientific program as we speak, and uh, it will be hosted by the uh, Nurse Practitioner Association of Nova Scotia. And uh, we really are pleased that uh, it's in Canada. The last time the conference was uh, hosted by uh, Canada was in uh, 2008. So now I'm going to take the next uh, few minutes. Uh, I did not insert the poll question now. Oh, it's the evaluation. Sorry, I'm not following directions. I'm going to look at the questions. I'm just going to give you a few minutes to uh, complete the poll.
Okay, now I'm going to move on to some of the questions. And uh, the first question is, um, why did we change advanced nursing practice to advanced practice nursing? Are the terms uh, interchangeable? The uh, terms do are used inter interchangeably in Canada. I'm sorry, I have a hard time with this word. The, um, the reason why we changed it is to align with the current Canadian literature and to really emphasize that uh, the difference of advanced practice nursing is uh, the clinical first focus in advanced nursing practice and nurses uh, who are working in advanced nursing practice may have uh, educational up to graduate level but may not necessarily have a clinical focus so we're trying to emphasize the clinical focus that's why the change and align with the uh, current uh, literature we also added a definition at the end of the framework to help understand uh, a bit more about uh, the change we um, have also uh, had many questions around title protection of uh, for the CNS and the framework has I didn't go into uh, details with the presentation but we do have in the revised framework uh, uh, some suggestions around title protection and the importance based on the literature and options uh, of credentialing mechanism we currently have in Canada two jurisdictions that have recognition of titles for uh, clinical specialty but it's not consistent across Canada. So it is an issue that we have raised in the framework and we have a section uh, on, on this. Uh, we also have been asked about the nurse practitioner role in anesthesia, if that role has been uh, developing further in, uh, in Canada. And we are not hearing any new development in, in this role. We have had uh, earlier, uh, programs and roles in, in Ontario and some discussion in uh, British Columbia, but we have not seen this uh, category of nurse practitioner being uh, credentialed. Uh, specifically, those uh, in anesthesia work within uh, the specialty of uh, adult and nurse practitioner in Ontario, and we understand that these are not roles that are, are currently being uh, developed or uh, develop further uh, elsewhere. We're also asked about the uh, CNS role and if there's uh, an increase or if there's any new development in, in the jurisdictions. And we have uh, uh, noted that, uh, again, in regional programs uh, or regional uh, health authority are developing roles uh, that are uh, uh, named clinical nurse specialists in uh, areas that meet the need of, of those health authorities. So it could be uh, roles uh, that address some uh, uh, programs related to palliative care and also programs uh, that will uh, address unique needs of these uh, jurisdictions. Uh, so we are hearing of new roles in in regional health authority that uh, are meeting needs of, uh, of that region. And those CNS role would cover uh, many settings and uh, would be uh, key in, uh, in developing uh, and bringing evidence um, uh, in those uh, health authority. And some of those roles are uh, at the early stage and that's what we're hearing that uh, some of those roles are, are meeting uh, needs of those uh, health authority. Uh, there's also confusion, uh, just want to mention, in, um, around uh, title or designation for nurse practitioners and um, the uh, description uh, can be uh, different throughout uh, some jurisdictions. Some of the nurse practitioner may be uh, uh, licensed as, uh, registered as an RN in extended class. So what we are uh, hoping is to influence some uh, consistency in, uh, in uh, uh, designation so that it's clear for the public who the nurse practitioner is. And this is some 
uh, issues that uh, this is an issue that's been raised by the Nurse Practitioner Association of Canada around uh, some confusion around uh, the designation of nurse practitioners where it's creating uh, confusion and, and, and uh, it's not uh, optimal for uh, clarity of, of the role. Um, I'm just going through uh, through the questions. I think I've answered the majority of the questions, except for one that was asking about uh, the slide deck. And what what we usually do is uh, the presentations. Uh, the webinar is available on YouTube, and uh, you can access it and. Uh, also uh, upload your certificate of uh, uh, attendance. And uh, I have my email in, on this slide. So if you ever uh, have any questions, and uh, if some of you are interested to have a, a, a soft copy, I'm not gonna say hard copy, a soft copy of the framework, uh, please send me a note and uh, I can send you a, uh, uh, a copy of the framework because we we can we have the capacity to print uh, copies, but they will be French and English versions will be available on CNA's website in the next few days. We're just gonna uh, we're just finalizing the uh, uh, French version, but it will be available on CNA's website um, shortly. So any questions, please do uh, send me an email. I would be pleased and thank you for your attention. A lot of you had great questions and uh, I really appreciate the interest. And uh, just a slide to where you're gonna find the, uh, the uh, recording of the, uh, of the webinar on this page, labeled the Canadian Nurses Association Progress and Practice Series. So the next slide, we have the uh, uh, upcoming webinar, uh, which uh, is an interesting uh, uh, project that uh, some advanced practice nurses are involved. It's uh, using a knee consult uh, 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 model for uh, accessing uh, specialists, and I've heard great feedback on this uh, project. So we're going to be presenting on this, and uh, it will be... Uh, on uh, March 26, and I hope that uh, some of you will register. And if you're not able to attend, we can you can access this through the uh, YouTube channel. Thank you, and uh, have a great day.